Okay, so in this problem, we're going to look at uh, how to understand the difference between the stated rate, which is the APR, right? Remember, stated is the annual percentage rate, but this is the rate that's stated in the contract versus the effective annual rate. Because again, like we talked about in the lecture, what we want to be able to do is compare a number of different rates with different compounding periods and still be able to uh, have a comparison across them. So for instance, we have these three options. We have a bank that's offering us, say, a, a loan that is 15% compounded daily, another bank that's offering us a loan that's 15.5% compounded quarterly, and a final bank that's offering us a loan at 16% compounded annually. Now what we want to be able to do is decide which of these offers is the best for us and in which one will we pay the least amount of interest. Right? The problem is, is that you know, we can't go on the rates because the compounding periods are different. So we don't know that bank A is the lowest rate because daily compounding means that we'll pay more interest effectively right, than a, uh, an annual compounding. Now, is it more than 16% compounded annually? We don't know. Again, that's what the effective annual rate is designed to give us the ability to do. It will give us a rate that is comparable despite all these different compounding periods. Okay. So we'll, uh, we'll do it with the formula and, uh, and then I'll show you how to use the calculator. Uh, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's very straightforward either way. Okay, so the EAR or the effective annual rate the formula says that it is equal to 1 plus the APR divided by the number of compounding periods per year, which we just call M, raised to the number of compounding periods per year, minus 1. Okay. So we can plug that in. We can say uh, 1 plus the APR here is 0.15. The number of compounding periods per year is the number of days in a year. And I'll just use 360 to make the math easier. Raised to the 360 minus one. Right. Now you can do that on your calculator. You can even do it on the financial calculator. Uh, you won't need to though, so I'm not, I'm not, I won't demonstrate, but you definitely can. Uh, and you get 0.1618 or 16.18%. Right. So we can see that because of daily compounding, uh, that 15% rate that is written in the contract is effectively a 16.18% annual rate. So already we know that this is a worse loan. We're going to pay a higher interest than this one because this is telling us right on the straight up that we're paying 16% annually. This one is saying we are effectively paying 16.18 annually. Right. So compounding here has a big difference. On the quarterly one, we would have an effective annual rate of 1 plus 0 0.155, 15.5%, divided by the number of periods per year, 4, raised to the number of periods per year, 4, minus 1. And that would give us 0.1642, or 16.42%. Again, even worse, right? Quarterly compounding and a slightly higher stated rate gives us an effective annual rate that is significantly higher, right? We're paying a full, almost a full percentage point higher. Uh, and this is a more than a percentage point higher effectively on an annual basis. Now, the effective annual rate for Bank C, hopefully you can see that this is uh, already telling us what the effective annual rate is because it's given as an annual rate. But if we weren't sure or we didn't notice or we were just worried, we could plug it into, a ca into our formula. 1 plus 0.16 divided by the number of compounding periods per year, which is 1, raised to the 1, minus 1. Now you can see that all those 1s cancel out and we end up with 0.16. So what is the best loan to get? Well, it's this one, right? And that is, this is, I mean, this is illustrative of why we need the, the effective annual rate. Because on the face of it, and in class, normally I get an opportunity to ask everybody what they think the lowest one is gonna be. 
And a good majority of students pick this one. And why wouldn't we? 15% is lower than 16%. And the effect of daily compounding, right? We can't do this kind of mental math in our head. This isn't something that we can just know off the bat. With experience, we might be able to guess that it's gonna be a worse rate, uh, but without checking, we can't be sure, okay? Now, in the calculator, we, uh, it, it is very straightforward. However, we do need to be in a different environment, right? Uh, and the environment that we need to be in is called the interest conversion environment. Now, there are instructions in all the calculator help files. There's also instructions in the lecture files itself in the slides. Um, but uh, you can come here and check. Uh, again, it's pretty straightforward. Notice that above the two button, it says icon V. Icon V is the interest conversion environment. And to get in there, we just press second and the two button. Uh, and now we're in the interest conversion environment, and the first thing that you'll see is NOM equals 0, 0.0000. Now NOM stands for the nominal rate, which is another word for the stated rate or the APR. Right? Again, finance, lots of different names for the same thing, and that's unfortunately part of this class, is being exposed to all the different terminology. Okay. So the nominal rate is the APR, this is the stated rate. So this is the rate that's listed right here, and we just go ahead and we plug it in as a percentage, like everything else in the calculator, at 15%. Now, notice that above, at the top of the screen, at the very top, there are some words. It says compute, it says enter, and it gives you an up and down arrow. Now, one of the, the uh, what this is telling you is the controls that you can use or need to use in this environment. Okay, so for instance, right, let me clear out. I'll go back in. First notice, values are stored. Clearing, turning it off, clearing, doesn't affect the value. Just like the time value of money buttons, these values are stored separately. The way to clear the interest conversion environment is to press second and then clear. And notice above clear, it says clear work, and that'll clear us out, okay? Second thing is the compute and enter tell us how to put stuff in. So 15, and then I don't press equals, I press the enter button, and that's how I set my values, okay? And then the up and down arrows means that's how I need to move around because I've got more inputs to put in. So I can press down. I see effective, that's what I'm solving for. I press down again, I see C divided by Y. That's my cash flows per year. And you see one, that's my default here. I press down again and I'm in NOM. So there's only three inputs in this environment and pressing down or pressing up gets you to all of them, right? So I go to my cash flows per year because that's the only other input I have and I type 360 and I press enter. And then I can press up again and that's effective. Effective rate is what I'm trying to solve for, the effective annual rate. And the calculator tells me how to solve. It says press compute. I press compute and I get 16.1798, right? Now again, rounding, the calculator is using a 365 day year. That's why it's getting a slightly different answer here because I did this one with a 360 day year. Uh, no, no, we put 360. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, just rounding, this is just a rounding difference. Uh, that uh, that uh, when I did it by hand, I just got a rounding difference, okay? So this is how we use the calculator environment like this. Uh, we are just inputting the nominal rate, so we could do the second one, we could clear our work, we could do 15.5 and enter, we could have cash flows per year of four. Oh, by the way, cash flows per year, for whatever reason, the calculator, it doesn't ever clear this. Uh, there's no way to get it to clear. I think it's just because you have to enter it in every time, uh, so they didn't think it was worth it, uh, but just don't freak out if it doesn't clear it. It never does, right? But I have a quarterly rate here, so four, and then enter, I overwrite it. Uh, my effective rate, I compute, and I get 16.42, okay? So uh, that's how we uh, use the calculator to uh, solve for these. You'll definitely see that again, so uh, um, make sure you, uh, you give it some practice in the homework.